Hey guys, it's Rolo Chris here, and um, I know it's been a while. I haven't made a video in such a such a long time, but I'm here to just do something quick. Um, I wanted to talk shortly about uh, temperatures, and especially like you know oil temperatures and stuff. That um, I wanted to say start oil temperature. Temperature, sorry, is what I want to know is there's two types of oil temperature heating up. So you have your idle warm up, which results into a, a higher PSI idle. So let's say you start your car in the morning, you're idling for a while, and then you start driving. You'll notice that your oil pressure will be like maybe 70, 60, 55, and it's high. It's a lot higher than it would be, whereas if you just start the car in the morning, start driving, and then as it gets hot, it will uh, be lower. It'll be like maybe like in the 20 PSI range when you're driving, 25, maybe 30. So it's important that you know the two different types of heating up your oil before you beat on your car because you don't want it to start up in the morning idle for a long time and your temperature will say 170 on the in your gauge or 180 and you think you're good to go but your oil temperature might be a lot colder than that and really you know the pressure is really high which means you know you have resistance oil flow resistance so it's important that you um, hit the sweet spot so you might want to idle a little bit then drive a little bit and then get it warmed up or you might be a person just starts off right off the get-go driving it the oil gets hot a lot quicker than idling and you get that right oil pressure that you're looking for before you get on it me I typically wait till it gets in the mid 30s to maybe high 20s before I actually do a pulls or street racing anyway, I don't want to do it when it's like 65 psi in the morning or if I'm driving it's a cold day I try to get it hot as possible that way you know your bearings are happy and there's no you know resistance in the oil flow now I kind of want to talk about coolant temperature and this is one of the things I love about cars is thermal efficiency and just remember that if your car example let's see what my car might be at let's see um, if your car is let's say I don't know um, 165 degrees or something right you're driving at 160 or like like this right now 169 just remember just because your gauge says you're at 169 doesn't mean your motor is at 169 see remember coolant pulls heat from the motor so your coolant is never the same temperature as the engine the engines actually hotter it could be 10 to 15 degrees hotter so keep note of that when you're on the dyno and you're at operating temperature 185 in your gauge your engine's probably more like you know almost 200 or maybe 190 something so you know, typically I do pulls at 175 on the dyno, 170, because I know the engine's probably around 180 something. So that's just something I do, and it gets better dyno numbers. Plus, the car is nice and hot, but the cool, you know, the engine itself is not too hot, but the coolant itself also is not too hot. But just remember, your coolant is never what your engine really is. It's just pulling heat away. So that gives you an idea that if you're at 200, or let's say you're driving like Honda Civic and you're at 215 degrees. And your motor's you know operating range is between 200 to 220 your engine is actually probably in the 220s it's probably higher than you think so that's why i like to run typically a little bit cooler that way it's running really good and op, you know at, at operating temperature but you know that the engine is not really hot as you think it is you know so i like to have peace of mind when i do that typically so that's just something i wanted to share as well now I know this sounds strange, but someone asked me about my catch can setup and why I have a return system. So here in this beat up car, see I have a, my lines for blow by and it goes into this catch can here. And it doesn't just hold oil in there like most typical catch cans that lead you to having to drain it, all the sludge and everything, and the water and the moisture. Mine actually has a drain. I don't know if you can see it, but it drains right there there you go drains right back this is the black line at the bottom one but the one right here drains right back into the block you can't really see it but it does drain back into the block somewhere I can't really get a good view but if you can kind of see down there it kind of drains back into the block with the turbo return the reason why is because if you look at a lot of some a lot of the stock cars they have a oil return so Instead of having you to drain your catch can all the time with all the um, oil and sludge and water, it's because moisture is building up in your catch can and it's not getting hot to evaporate. The point of operating temperature of an engine is to burn out moisture, right? So when I have oil come into this can, 
it's going back in the motor and it's burning up the moisture. So I'm never getting sludge. So if I ever open my engine or my oil cap or anything, you would think that it'll have water in it. So yeah, it doesn't have water in it. There's no water in my motor. It just, all that oil goes back into the motor and it evaporates. So I don't have to sit there and constantly drain the, the catch can. You know, if you look at some stock cars, they have the same setup. So I got the idea from people who do like, you know, certain rally cars and stuff. They have a return system for a reason. So don't think that it's putting water back in motor. It needs to go somewhere back in there so it can evaporate. If it doesn't, all that hot air and temperature, I mean, flow, you know, exhaust flow, goes in here and just sits in there and it causes a moisture buildup and that oil gets sludgy so this actually what happens also is this catch can is also um, a crankcase relief so if boost is coming out the bottom of the crankcase because that you know as the top does the same thing it lets out you know back uh, overflow of air comes out um, past the valves also if I have boost going into the crankcase it also vents into the bottom of this catch can and there's a valve that keeps it from pushing any vent, uh, exhaust fumes that are coming in back into the motor. So it's, it has two phase inside. It lets out crank, crank, crank case pressure and it also drains oil back at the same time, not pushing anything back up into the head. Pretty cool thing, you know? So it's also good to have it. I recommend it. Some kind of crank case release, uh, pressure release down there because, you know, if you're in a lot of boosts like me, has, you know, I have a lot of, uh, a lot of boosts and um, bigger ring gaps you know letting that pressure out the bottom of the crankcase you know just because i have these you know up here breathers doesn't mean there's air down there pushing oil away from the bearing so you'll find that oil will push away from the bearings if there's a lot of boost in the crankcase so it does let out a lot of air from the bottom of the, of the catch and in the crankcase so it comes into the catch can and breathes out but any oil coming in is not gonna you know interfere with it because it got a two Ports phase in there. I don't know. I can't really say it, guys. It's been a while since I haven't made a video, or even spoke to anyone. But um, yeah. So that's one thing um, that I wanted to answer that question because some, a couple people asked me that on Instagram and messaged me. But um, other than that, guys, this car is a piece of junk. It's old, still running. Um, it's not the prettiest setup. I don't think it was ever meant to be. Um, it was just kind of a project car that had so much into it and raced around, and it was an experiment. You know, it's never supposed to be a show car, but uh, I just drive it now. But uh, guys, um, I know it's been so long. Hope you enjoy this little short clip. Oh, one last thing. If you're wondering what this gauge is, it's just a tablet that has the Honda S dash on it that hooks to my S300, which is down there underneath the car. Um, so that's what it is. It's not any kind of special dash. It's just, I use it as a dash. It's just a Samsung and I have an app that's a GPS app here. I just kind of hide it in there with the speed <laughs> so um, I can see how fast I'm going since I have no uh, cables hooked up to this e-series transmission so this kind of helps me a lot but uh yeah guys um it's been a long time um hope you guys enjoy the short clip I know I haven't been making videos kind of just been out there just working you know cost of living is crazy now in Florida after COVID it's kind of hard to experiment and do things and play on the dyno for hours everything costs so much money now so you know sorry if I couldn't you know uh, make many videos but um people do reach out to me on Instagram still you know big boosted setups or something um, so I mean you guys are doing great out there I mean so many of you guys have make are making power now I'm very proud of the 4AG community now you, you guys before all the doubts are going away people were saying you know 4AGs and 7As will never make power past 300 they'll break and people now are making 800 900 guys more than me thousand horsepower 7AGs you know 600s almost sevens you know it, it's crazy you know so you know the, the knowledge is out there and you guys are having excellent builds i mean i'm happy you know i don't have to spend all this money anymore to find things and you know what breaks and what doesn't so my work is done you know you guys have it in your hands now i passed the baton to you guys you know you guys are killing it out there you know i see so many boosted setups that are amazing you know Make mine like crap, you know, so I mean, <laughs> but you know, I'm glad I'm here to help you guys or anything, you know, I, I, I learned or knowledge to share with you guys. So thank you guys for watching. Oh, and I forgot, if you guys out there having a bad day, life is tough, don't give up. I know it's hard out there. People have women problems, financial problems, people problems, but you know what? Talk to Christ, we're in the last days, you know? 
Jesus is your biggest fan, he died for you, so remember that. He's always there for you. If you ever need anything, just talk to him. Roll the Chris out. Y'all have a good one.